What is going on everyone? Welcome back to a new video. Today we are going to be reacting to Grand Canyon National Park in Arizona. I've got the video up ready to go here. I've left them a like and subscribed. It is on the Grand Canyon NPS uh, YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and hit play. Have a look. landscape of this place is just incredible. I don't think I'm going to appreciate the scale of this. I'm going to. It's going to be difficult to understand the, the actual size of this place just from this video. It is more than just a view, more than just a two-dimensional landscape. There are so many lessons and ways to explore Grand Canyon. It is a laboratory. It is a virtual classroom. The diversity here is unparalleled. Uh, I already know that I would seriously love to explore this place. I've been in a few like sort of we call them gorges in the UK, um, which is sort of like a canyon esque or a lot smaller scale. But um, I love being inside gorges. They're, they're excellent to explore when you when the river has subsided and it's got to a point where you can just walk straight through a gorge. It's it's brilliant. I mean, different landscape. It's a lot greener. You know, you haven't got the the orange rock, but. There's a huge landscape that is just begging to be explored and it really just takes a moment to stop in a side canyon or sit under the trees and... Who is this? Is she like a park ranger or something? This is something we don't have in the UK. I don't think we have anything that sort of patrols the national parks in the UK. I think it's quite common in the States to see people like this around. Really get to know all the things that this landscape has to offer. It really does start to put things in perspective, I think, for a lot of people. You suddenly feel quite small and your, feel, your problems seem quite small as you're standing here on the edge of the canyon because there's, there's, there's just so much. I'm not even sure what a park ranger is, like the police officer of that national park. I don't understand. Much to try to take in. In Grand Canyon, you'll find a whole host of environments, everything from cool fir forests to hot, dry deserts, uh, riparian zones, and over a million acres of wild landscape that have been the stage for human exploration and inspiration for generations. So it looks like it's very green on top, but then very orange down below where it's uh, unle unless there is I don't know if there's life down below in the uh, in the bottoms of the canyons most of Grand Canyon's visitors first arrive on the south rim very few of those folks actually find their way over to the north rim and even fewer descend into the canyon itself Statistics tell us that only about 5% of our visitors actually will drop down below the rim. These folks are... 5% of people actually go down into the canyons. I'd love to go down um, and take a look myself. I, to be honest, if I went all the way over there and I didn't go down the canyons, I'd be disappointed in myself if I just stayed on the uh, on the top side there arrive at the canyon and they, they find their way to the first viewpoint, they look down into this two-dimensional landscape and feel that they have experienced Grand Canyon. Uh, this video is from 2013, by the way, so if there's anything uh, missing that has been added now, please let me know. But what they're missing out on is the opportunity to really explore the inner canyon and experience the diversity that this place has to offer.
this park has a broad elevational change. So as you descend into the canyon, for every thousand feet, you actually gain three to five degrees Fahrenheit. So at the river's edge, the temperature can be 15 to 25 degrees warmer than on the south rim. You leave behind the forests, which are more typical of the rim environments, and you enter into a land. What are those trees? Look interesting. Landscape filled with black brush and cacti, plants that are more typical of and adapted to. Awesome cactuses, some I've never seen um, sort of in person before. Well, apart from the little potted ones that you buy in shops and stuff, never seen a wild cactus. To a desert environment. Traveling further into the Inner Canyon, you arrive at the Colorado River and along its edge, you will find a very critical riparian habitat that extends the length of the river itself. We have seeps and springs nestled in side canyons that have a variety of species that are dependent on them. The, the, the diversity in the springs alone is unparalleled to any other location in the park. I don't know why, but whenever I picture the Grand Canyon, I don't really ever expect it to be flourishing like this This is showing. You know, the tropical plants and waterfalls and rivers running through it. I always just think it to be like sort of a boneyard. Almost 94% of the park is proposed wilderness. As such, it is managed and protected as though it is wilderness. The size of the antlers on that. In Grand Canyon Vulture. Wilderness, you won't find cars. It's a roadless area where natural quiet is protected. Scorching hot in the day and freezing cold at night. There are places where you can descend below the canyon, where the air is still, where you have only yourself and the rocks around you and the plants, and suddenly your senses become tuned to the lizard scurrying in the rocks or the sounds of the canyon wren or the dripping of the springs those are the experiences that's amazing what a landscape it's just it looks like the surface of the moon on on the i think they've been calling it the rim and then it's just got this vibrant sort of wildlife tree area with a river running through it did they say that was the colorado river that's Is that a brilliant not... That's a brilliant landscape. Very strange though. Nothing survives on the surface, but it flourishes in the down below. Wild. Evidence of human life in Grand Canyon extends back thousands of years. Some of our first explorers arrived on the rim, peered down into the canyon as so many people do today, but they saw it as an impassable chasm. They saw it as lifeless, undesirable, a place that no one would ever visit intentionally. These expeditions opened up the opportunity for artists and photographers to capture the imagery of Grand Canyon and share it with the nation and ultimately the world, which really helped to bring about that the late yeah I'm um, I follow a, a subreddit um, which is specifically catered towards pictures in the Grand Canyon and the the level of colours and depths that you can get on those on those pictures are, are insane the different shades of orange in that our appreciation for the scenic value of this landscape and the fact that there's just you know you've got this really ambient orange 
location and then just to the to the left side there in the bottom left you've just got snow and rocks so you got best of both worlds there Most importantly, what the Grand Canyon has to teach all of us is to slow down, to take it all in, to get to know what is beyond the reaches of the road and look deep within the canyon itself and find that sense of discovery in yourself and that sense of wildness in this place. It's the canyon itself that brings together the human history and the science. It's not just a canyon, it's the grandest canyon. There are deeper, That's amazing. there are wider, there are longer canyons, but none of them are the Grand Canyon. I'm sure I've seen a video of uh, like a documentary of someone um, sort of backpacking or canoeing. I think it was canoeing the whole Colorado River, um, if that's the one that goes through through the Grand Canyon. It was a br brilliant documentary. That's beautiful. Well, the Grand Canyon is definitely an awesome place. I'm looking to do some more British Guy Reacts videos this week, so leave me a comment down below and I'll probably more than likely react to that video for you and hopefully get it uploaded this week. So I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thank you very much for watching.